Hello, it's Phil Thatch, and today I want to talk to you about the first lens that I would recommend you buying for your Nikon Z50. So first of all, if you haven't bought a Z50 yet, this is the way I recommend going about it. I recommend getting the Z50 and the two lens kit because you'll get a discount on both of the ZDX lenses and they're both fantastic. First of those two is the 16 to 50 and it's, that's like a, a full frame equivalent of 24 to 75. So really a, a great focal length. I highly recommend it. Plus it's tiny. Look how small that thing is. Of course, it doesn't work until you get to there. So there's the operating range, 16 to 50. But for storage, it's super tiny. So I recommend getting that lens. And this is the 50 to 250. It's also small and light and easy to carry in your camera bag. There's 50 and there's 250. Great lenses. The one problem with them is they're slow. They, in terms of uh, the amount of light they'll let in, their aperture is, is small, which means they don't let in a lot of light. This one, the range is from f4.5 to f6.3. And this one's a little better. It's f3.5, but that's only at 16 millimeters to 6.3. So these lenses, and they have vibration reduction, so that's really good, but these lenses are really nice for bright sunny days or, you know, just, they're, they're just not good in, in low light. Uh, average light to bright light, they work really good. And tripod it up for landscape photography, you know, doesn't, you usually shoot at f8 or, or f11 in landscape photography, so, so both of these work great for that. As a matter of fact, I love this as a landscape photography kit really, really nice. But for other things, you might want something a little bit faster. Now, the other thing that I recommend that you do when you buy your Z50, in addition to spending the little bit of extra money to get the two lens kit, when you buy a Z series camera, if you do this at the time you buy a Z series camera, you can get the FTZ adapter. And this will allow you to use older lenses for the DSLR Nikons. You can use all of the lenses that have a G at the end of the name and all the lenses that have an E at the end of the name. And there are lots and lots and lots of them. They are usually very, very good. And they're also usually cheaper than their Z-mount counterparts. These are like $250 if you buy them by themselves. But if you buy it at the time that you buy your Z-mount camera, be that a Z50 or a Z5 or a Z6 or 7 or a Z62, you can always get one of the, I, to me, I think they should throw it in for free. But for $46, that's the way to go. Now with this, let's talk about the lens I'm recommending today. This is a, a lens that's specifically for DX cameras, which is APS-C, the smaller sensor, which is what the Z50 has in it. The Z6 and the Z7 and the Z5, they have a full frame sensor, but the Z50 is a Z-mount camera that has the small sensor. So this lens is designed for the small sensor. You can use lenses designed for the big sensor on the small sensor, and really you can do it the other way around, but it's not recommended. But the big on the small works just fine. But anyway, this is small, recommended for small, and it works great. This is a 35 millimeter, which uh, full frame equivalent is about 52 and a half, and the maximum aperture is f1.8. So it lets in lots and lots of light, especially when compared to these lenses and it has pretty nice bokeh. If, you're, if your subject is relatively close to you, the, the background will be nicely and creamily out of focus, and it has nice bokeh balls. It's just really, really beautiful. And then if you just need low light, but you still need lots of depth of field, if you're shooting something that's pretty far away, this thing has a lot of depth of field, even at f1.8. So really, really great lens. And here's the other thing. Let me, let me look at some pricing for you. I have the B and H application pulled up. Wait a minute, better get my glasses so I can see what I'm talking to you about. So this lens is $196, which is pretty doggone cheap. That's for a brand new one. I haven't priced used ones, but B and H right now has a refurbished one for 159 and they have an open box. I thought I saw an open box one here. They've got an open box one for 169. So it's a really inexpensive lens. Now you could get the Z-mount 35, which is designed for full frame, but it'll work fine on, 
on a, a smaller sensor, but that lens is $846. 846. Now it's on sale right now. It's the first time it's gone on sale since it's come out and it's on sale right now for 696, but still 696 versus 196. We're talking $500 cheaper. Now you do need, you do need the $46 FTZ adapter, but still 46 plus 196 versus, and that's full price versus 696 on sale. That lens probably has better image quality than this lens, but this lens has really good image quality. So I highly recommend this lens as the first lens you get for your Z50. You know, the, the Z50, I never treat it like it's a budget camera, but I, I, really it is, you know, cause you can get the entire kit for I think $1,096 plus $46 for the, for the FTZ. So compared to a lot of other camera options out there, the Z50 is kind of a budget camera. I never really thought about that until recently. I, I always thought it was, you know, just woohoo, Nikon's finally made a, a Z mount APS-C camera. And I was happy that it was inexpensive, but I just didn't put two and two together. This is a budget camera. So considering that it is a budget camera and thinking about how it can make images like uh, an expensive camera, this is a great lens because this is a budget lens that can make photographs like an expensive lens. Here's the box it comes in. It comes in a gold box like most F-mount Nikon lenses, uh, which is really cool. Of course, it comes with a front cap and a rear cap. It comes with a lens hood too and a, and a little cloth bag. I think the cloth bag's in here, the lens hood's around here somewhere. I don't use either one of those things. It has one switch on it, just a, a auto and manual focus switch. And of course, if you're in autofocus, if you grab the, the focus ring, you can override. There's no how far are you focusing from the camera right now markings on it. It's, it's an inexpensive lens, but again, the image quality is really good. So here's what the DX35 1.8G looks like on the Z50. And of course you have to put the FTZ on the Z50 and then the DX35 1.8G on the FTZ adapter. And I have a, an Arca Swiss plate mounted on the bottom of the FTC adapter. It normally doesn't stick down that far. This lens has a pretty nice minimum focus distance. I, I don't know the exact measurement, but just to give you an idea, that's it right there. My hand is in focus and I'm pretty close. As a matter of fact, you know, it's, it's only 35 millimeters, 52.5 equivalent, but my hand it does is filling more than the frame. So you can get pretty close to your subject. And then if you are that close to your subject and you're letting some things be some background be in the frame, it will be beautifully bokehified and out of focus. Pretty cool. Autofocus speed with this lens is, is not stellar, but it, it'll, it'll do. I'm going to, as a matter of fact, sometime in the next week or two, I'm going to take the Z50, the FTZ, and this lens, and I'm going to shoot high school basketball with it. So look for that video to be coming up, unless for some crazy reason I don't get to shoot that. But hopefully I'll make a video about basketball photography with this combination. I think I'm going to use this lens and then the 50 millimeter 1.8 lens, which is another one. It's, it's not designed for APS-C, but it'll work fine on it. So that'll, that'll give me 52 and a half and 75 full frame equivalent to shoot basketball. So let's, let's, uh, let's see, we'll go back to minimum focus distance. My hand is in focus and now I'm going to focus on something across the room. That's not bad. It's pretty quick. It's not like one of my Holy Trinity primes. My, I've got all the F 2.8 primes. It's nothing like that. And it's not like my, uh, my 500 f4 you know those are crazy expensive lenses this is a less than 200 dollars lens you wouldn't expect the the uh, autofocus to be blazing fast with this here is a seven shot handheld sunset panorama that i made at epcot with this lens the dx35 f 1.8 g and the nikon z50 and i thought while we're taking a look at this photograph i would mention that i love to use this lens for video in fact if this lens wasn't in the video I would have made the video with this lens. So again, this 
is the first lens I would buy for my Nikon Z50. Unless you want to do telephoto work, and unless you really want to do bird photography, and in that case, I would get the 200 to 500 f 5.6 e, or I think they're supposed to be coming out with a Z mount 200 to 600. So one of those if you really want to get into bird photography, but if you want to do more general photography, portrait photography, low light photography, the DX35 f 1.8 g would be the first lens I would get. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.